good morning welcome back to why in the morning you are watching the y254 channel my name is Jeremy Chache remember that you're watching health on Monday a day on which we focus on particular health issues and we also bring experts on different health issues to come and join us so this is health Monday once again remember that if you want to reach out to us you can do so on our social media pages that is actually you first of all have to put the hashtag health on Monday and hashtag why in the morning and then post on our social media handles that's Facebook and Twitter y254 channel and then on Instagram that's y254 underscore channel I myself am a Twitter gal you can find me on joy underscore machachi on Twitter alone today we've got two wonderful guests a doctor and a counselor we are having a talk about diabetes and we have an expert on diabetes on set with us today her name is Dr. Saira Sakwala Karibu Sana Daktari uh -huh. and our other guest she is actually a counselor she's she assists Dr. Sakwala out in explaining uh, the counseling ex um, the counseling perspective and the importance of counseling when it comes to diabetes. Is that right? Thank you. Yes, and her name is Pauline Machio. Karibu Nisana. Thank you. Thank yes, you. and actually, mm. uh, Dr. Saira, you actually work with MPSHA, is that right? Yes. Yes, and that's wonderful to hear. How long have you been working specifically when it comes to diabetes? When did you decide to focus on um diabetes alone becoming an expert on it yeah so I uh, from 2013 onwards I've actually been focusing more on diabetes okay. I was I'm a physician by uh, qualification so I'm uh, after finishing my undergrad yes. I did uh, MMED in internal medicine and then I decided to go on to diabetes looking at uh, the you know the burden of diabetes and the need in the country right the need in the country we'll talk more about that need just a little bit later on maybe you can define for our viewers who are watching who don't know maybe they're not very well versed what diabetes is and how many types there are so um, diabetes broadly a, def a broad definition is that it's a condition mm -hmm. which is associated with a problem with the usage of insulin of uh, sugar in your body uh -huh. the problem extends beyond sugar mm -hmm. but we'll focus on sugar so if there is Mm -hmm. A problem with either the production of a hormone called insulin, mm -hmm. which I'll explain a bit in detail, mm -hmm. uh, or the use of that hormone, which takes the sugar into the cells of the body. Mm -hmm. And when you've got sugar circulating in the blood and its related consequences, that is actually defined as diabetes. That's diabetes. Yeah. I see. All right. And how many types are there specifically? So depending on now the basic mechanism, uh -huh. there are four different you can classify diabetes in four different types yeah right. so there is type 1 diabetes right. there is type 2 diabetes yes. then there is the pregnancy related diabetes oh. which is known as gestational diabetes yeah gestational diabetes yeah and then there is the other specific types which are related to conditions like uh, hormonal problems right uh, you know cancer of the pancreas mm -hmm. excessive alcohol consumption causing destruction of the pancreas mm -hmm. and uh, conditions related to other specific genetic types so there are basically four different classifications. However, the common ones are the type 1 and type 2 diabetes That's that we all one, hear two, about. Two. Yeah. Yes. And of course, gestational diabetes is also pretty common when you look at pregnancy-related yes. uh, diabetes. Yeah. Yes, I see. And um, you've said type 1 and type 2 are the most common ones, and that there are others which come from um, overusage of alcohol, some come from pregnancies. But today we want to focus on type 1. And actually, next week, we'd like um, to focus on type 2 and we'll see how to work around that. And do stay tuned in next week as well. Do send your questions for next week as well if you're interested in learning about type 2 diabetes, which is actually the one that's affecting our youth even <coughs> more than type 1 diabetes. Is that right? True. Okay, so can we talk about maybe, um, before we go into treatments, the, uh, how it affects? Why is it that type 2 affects younger people usually? Why is it that younger people tend to acquire type 2 rather than type 1? Actually, it's the other way around, I think. So type 1 diabetes is the commonest type of diabetes in children mm. and young adults is ideally, it's actually type 1 diabetes. So that's let me just go a, a bit yes. into what is type 1 and what is type 2. I'm yes. sure viewers are wondering what the different types are. Okay. So you see in your body, you've got this hormone called insulin. So whenever you eat food, which contains carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are the sugars, which could be simple sugars or complex sugars. You know, okay. the starches, the potatoes, rice, flours. So those are complex carbohydrates. They're not sweet to taste, but they're still sugar. Mm. So all these are converted into your stomach or into your digestive system into glucose, which is the simplest form of carbohydrate. Right. Okay? That is taken up by your body, and that is then 
uh, circulates in your blood and it gives a sensation, a, it's like a sensor to a part of your body known as your pancreas. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now the pancreas is like a master factory producing different things which help in digestion of your food. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of the substances produced is insulin. Okay. Insulin is like a key, you know, it's like a key mm -hmm. which uh, when the sugar comes in it tells the pancreas to produce this key mm -hmm. and when the key is produced is it goes with the sugar mm -hmm. to different parts of the body mm -hmm. and there are some parts which are specific to energy production. So those parts then the pancreas, the, the key opens the doors and the sugar goes in and that's how you get energy. You remember we used to say we eat food to get energy. Yes. That is actually how it works, right? That's exactly So right. whenever there is a problem in the production of this key yeah. called insulin or the action of the key, yeah, which is known as insulin resistance, so that is when you get diabetes, either type 1 or type 2 specifically. Yeah. Right. Type 1 is when there is complete, uh, you know, cessation, like closure of that factory. So basically there is no insulin production by the body. Hmm. Type 2 is when insulin is produced but basically it cannot work because like let's say there's a blockage in the key, let's say because of obesity, excessive fat, not mm -hmm. eating the right food, having a family history. Mm -hmm. So type 1 diabetes affects about 5 to 10 percent of all people with diabetes whereas type 2 affects up to 80 to 85 percent of people living with diabetes. Okay? Uh -huh. Type 1 diabetes is basically, so however even though it affects 5 to 10 percent, it is the commonest type in children. And in young adults okay however we are seeing more and more of type 2 setting in in younger people because of the fact that we have changed our lifestyles yes so yeah so that's the basic core difference between type 1 and type 2 now the reason so after, why after after now that you've defined type 1 and type yeah. 2 now let's go into the reason why it's affecting young people nowadays even more than it used to mm. because I think this problem um, has actually it's exacerbated when, it, when it's come to the past 10, 20 years, it's not something that used to be there, let's say, in our parents' days or something. True. Can we maybe touch on that? Yeah. So, uh, you see, type 1 diabetes, If you, you just need to understand the causes of both of them, okay? Type 1 diabetes, the exact cause, unfortunately, is not known. However, what is thought is that there is, um, what is known, basically, is that type 1 diabetes occurs because of destruction of your pancreatic cells which are producing the insulin mainly because your own body's immune system for any reason it starts attacking those beta cells those cells that produce insulin okay and why that happens why the the immune system goes haywire is not completely understood mm -hmm. it could be because of genetic predisposition some genetic composition that you have which makes you more prone to get it yeah. on top of which probably you had a viral infection or a bacterial infection in the past uh -huh. which now puts you at a higher which you wouldn't even know that you had it probably yeah? or it was some, some other infection which your body detected as foreign but now it's detecting your own body parts as foreign and that is wow. known as autoimmunity so that causes destruction of that part of the pancreas which produces insulin. Okay? Wow. Uh, other causes like uh, basically attributions have been made to you know the specific um, geographic regions. For example, as you move far further away from the equator, uh -huh. the risk of getting type 1 diabetes is more. Why that is really? happening is exactly not very clear. Yeah? And it's not clear. And it's the reason not clear why, it's not why clear. exactly that oh, is the, 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 the presentation. Yeah? Okay. There are multiple theories. I'm not going to go into the details okay. of that, right? Right. Um, then uh, there's a specific age, uh, uh, basically, although it can occur at any age, from you know birth all the way even up to the age of 30 years and even later where the name changes to something known as LADA but basically it can still occur even later but most common age is up to the age of 34 type 1 diabetes uh -huh. okay and uh, yeah basically then the treatment for type 1 diabetes I think we're going to focus on a bit later so now if you look at type 2 diabetes why it is becoming more and more common in mm. younger people mm -hmm. um, like I said type 2 diabetes the etiological, the cause, causative factors, if you look at it, there is more known about the potential risk factors for type 2 diabetes. So having a family history puts you at a very, very high risk of developing type 2 diabetes, right. having, even at having an earlier age. that maybe someone in your family had Someone it. in your family. So the question you asked, which was very good, is why the rise in type 2 or type 1 diabetes over the last few years? Uh, so we have changed our lifestyles grossly. 
uh -huh. okay, over the last few years. Mm. What mine and your grandmother used to do is not <laughs> what we are doing at all. That's true. So you see, they, there were no cars, yeah. so they used to walk around. Mm -hmm. They used to be physically active. Yeah. They used to eat from their farms. Yeah, and they used to eat food. fresh organic. food, organic, 100%, <laughs> you know. They used to grow their own food, eat their own food. And there was a lot more physical activity than what we have. There was a lot less variety of foods to eat. Wow. So the traditional African food mm. is actually what the African body is adapted to. Your genetics are made for that kind of food, you know. Mm. The original ugali, sukuma, the typical That's what our bodies original are food, to, you know, yeah. the, the typical traditional food. Right. And we have bombarded it with a lot of things which the body is not able to take. Yeah. The fries, the burgers, the, the you know, pizzas chicken. and all those, <laughs> the African body unfortunately is not adapted to take that. So yeah. even at a much less weight, ah. you see people developing diabetes faster Same in our people. community, yeah, in, our, in our people, you know, in our country. So that's the main reason I think which is the shift from a healthier lifestyle to more of a westernized or rather an unhealthy right. uh, form of uh, lifestyle. You mm. see that when we so, changed our habits. Right. So that's where things kind of went wrong and then we saw, the other, uh, we saw the other side of diet when it came to how it affects us to the point that diabetes is now being acquired by younger people. And if we could now talk, <coughs> since we've talked about food, maybe we can talk about the diet. How can we improve our food? Is it to go back to what we originally started off with and just mm -hmm. what we came, what our grandmothers used to eat? Should we just go back to that kind of food and that's the best one for us? Is that's the mm -hmm. kind of vibe I'm getting from what you're saying. Because a lot of young people nowadays, you are very right with the pizza or oh yeah, people are getting things delivered at their houses and things have become so easy. True. Not only that, the billboards have come up everywhere mm. with these wonderful mouth-watering pictures of french fries and burgers and I, every time i look at them i want to eat that food and so these are the things that we keep i feel coming into the minds of our youth and then they get even more interested in that and now it's affecting them in such a bad way mm. maybe we can talk about ways we can change these effects now that we've discussed what diabetes is who it's affecting how it's affecting them now how can we change things how can we turn this around a little bit so the basic core change i think starts from attitude mm -hmm. yeah we need to like i've told you we know the risk factors and it's not only diabetes even high blood pressure cardiovascular disease, you'll hear a, a person of 37 years old having a heart attack. Did we used to have that in the past? No. no. Yeah. So it's a whole, basically it needs a whole overall attitude change in ourselves, in our systems. You know, it's fashionable now to eat out, to go to KFC, to go to, you know, different fast food yeah. places. I'm not specifically talking about KFC, but basically different fast food places and grab what is available. Right. The kind of lifestyles we have we have developed, the kind of jobs we are now at, mm -hmm. it does not give us even enough time to prepare most of the times the right kind of foods to eat. Mm -hmm. So in as much as the change has to come at multi-level, mm -hmm. but at least from the point of an individual, who is probably whoever is watching right now. Yes. What you need to understand is that I'm not saying we go back to what our grandmothers used to eat, because even when they used to eat what they used to eat, they used to work it out. Yeah. Okay, yes. so the whole point is, the, the basic take home message is that carbohydrates is what is mainly the culprit in most of these situations, okay. So if you could just cut down on your carbohydrate portions, okay, if you're eating the carbohydrate, you try to eat it, you know, the, the right kind of carbohydrate in the right portion. So let's say just as an example, if you want to eat, decide, okay, you ask me what is healthy eating then. Yes. So, there are different different types of diets which have been recommended generally. Yes. There's the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, especially if you've got hypertension. I don't even want to go into the details of There's those. Too many, yeah. But in, in, in short, if you're looking at our population, you have to look at what is available, mm -hmm. what is affordable, mm -hmm. and what people can like. You see, what is your choice, what you like to eat, and you have to cater like tailor it according to that. So, um, if you have your plate, your portion, right? So at least half of your portion should constitute vegetables, whether it is cooked or uncooked. That means the salads, the cooked, you know, sukumas, the bogas, whichever you are doing, the uncooked and the cooked, okay? Okay. Quarter of that portion should be protein. Okay. If you are in a growing stage, then you need more of the protein. Yes. Okay. 
proteins means things like the meat proteins, I mean the animal proteins and the plant based. Right. Yes, I'm not advocating that we don't do animal proteins. They are equally important for certain of your uh, yes. body functionings, yes. right? Of course. However, if you can do more of plant-based proteins, like the legumes, you know, mm. the grains, you go more towards right. plant-based, mm. then a quarter of your plate would constitute your carbohydrate. So the smallest portion should actually be the carbohydrate. But look at our African meal, what we have now moved to. The biggest portion is the carbohydrate. That's true. The rice, the potato is the largest portion, and there's a small boga somewhere on the yeah, side. Yeah, a small. And there's a small even. protein somewhere which may not even be there. Yeah. So balancing your portions and going more towards uh, um, eating more of uh, you know vegetables and fr uh, fruits. Mm -hmm. Again, fruits are also important. But remember, if you have diabetes, then you don't have to eat too many fruits at a go, specifically mm. to space them. Mm. So re realistically speaking, the diet that we even tell patients with diabetes to follow is actually what everybody should ideally be eating. You know, it's a healthy meal. It's, it's just a healthy, a healthy diet. Yeah. It's something that consists of your, um, um, every single part of the healthy part of diet that we should be consuming. Exactly. Right. And so you've talked about attitude, you've talked about dieting, and um, you have brought a counselor along with you. And later on, I'd like for her to explain the importance of the counseling aspect when it comes to helping people with diabetes. Mm -hmm. But if we could finish on, if we could finish off um, with the treatments you've spoken of, um, the attitude of people and also the the diet, the are these the most important things? There is another big portion to it. That's the physical activity, right? Exercise, right? Exercise, yeah. So that is extremely important along with what you're eating, right? All right, because physical activity, like exercise, you ideally you should be exercising at least 30 minutes in a day at least yeah ideally everybody or every one of us you know at least 150 minutes in a week mm -hmm. of uh, moderate intensity physical activity which could be and the best thing is to vary it and i say if you are young if you're especially youth even older patients even my patients who come to me with type 2 diabetes sports is one of the best ways to be indulging in physical activity you know why because you love doing it Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. walk, if I tell a patient just walk 30 minutes in a day, that's really boring at times. You, know, you can't yeah. walk 30 minutes in a day every day. Yeah. Personally, even it's difficult for me. You mm -hmm. have to have variation. Mm -hmm. So even with physical activity, we should be more sporty. I don't know why the whole concept of sports has just come out of our systems. Exactly, you know? yes. And especially you see a person reaching the age of 35, 36, they say now they're too old for sports. We need to establish again this whole culture of sports within our youth. Yes. You know, there should be, yes. you know, availability of mm. opportunities mm. to be able to go and play out there. Mm. And that is literally the best like form of physical activity we can indulge in. That's true because the shortest distances, even our young people have to either use a bike or exactly. you're going to take a bus or an Uber, or if a young person is driving, the shortest distances, nobody is interested in even walking. True. But yeah, I would encourage, even just to the kiosk or something, yeah. uh, walk, to the supermarket, walk. And if you're not carrying too many groceries, that's mm. good exercise too. True. Like you said, change it up a little bit. Yeah. Yes. You see, we say even like most of our people are working, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. are majority of our patients even are in the working, the working group people. Yes. And so they tell you, what time do I have to exercise? Just simple things like if you are going to work, Park your car at the furthest end, even if you have to take a car. You know, we live very far from work most of the times in Nairobi. Park your car at the furthest end that you can and walk that distance. Climb the stairs, don't use lifts. Right. Simple things which you can do, you know, in your routine. Don't use lifts. That's something we are doing too much. <laughs> yeah. Even to the third floor. Exactly. For God's sake, to the third floor. <laughs> Miss Pauline, Karibu sana. We've not heard anything from you. I'd like to please touch on the counseling aspect when it comes to diabetes and what it, what is the importance of it and, and <laughs> how can people connect these two aspects? So thank you. Yes. So when it comes to counseling in terms of diabetes management, yes. it's one of the core factors that we need to take care of uh -huh. because we understand when you are diagnosed with diabetes at first, yeah. it's uh, quite distressing. Uh, so most of the clients will come with what we call diabetic related distress. Yes. So if we don't work with them from the word go, because uh, we understand we have to talk to them and they for them to understand it's something that is lifelong but manageable. Yes. Because once you are diagnosed with diabetes, then you have to 
live with it. It never goes. It, it never goes yeah. most of the time. <laughs> yes. So they have to understand from the word go. Yes. But it can be managed mm -hmm. in terms of so medication. It can be cured, but it can be managed. managed yeah. Yes. So in terms of medication, because yes. you understand, like for type 1 insulin, yes. there's insulin insufficient in your body. So you have to understand from the word go that you have to get those jabs of insulin. Uh, you get clients are afraid of the pricks, but you just walk with them that the medication is important. Mm -hmm. Then you have to tell them about lifestyle modification, mm -hmm. the way Dr. Sokwala said about diet. Because you understand the youth junk have a lot, they take a lot of snacking, there's a lot of junk food. Mm -hmm. So you just have to help them understand that they have to have a little bit of attitude change in terms of diet management for the sake of the management of diabetes. These are uh, the group that also have got a uh, behavior, risky group of behavior. You know, in adolescent, we have what we call identity crisis. Mm -hmm. So their peers mm. is their world. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, they'll be asking themselves, why me? Mm. Why the diabetes? Why not my, my classmate? So they might be distressed. So if you don't work with them, just for them to understand that is manageable, is not going to make them not attain their future and personal goals in life, then they're able to understand. Uh, because if you don't work with them again, they'll start engaging in risky behaviors, alcohol use, drug use, because they are distressed. Mm. So to capture all this and prevent all these things from happening, and, and even leading to depression, which is also one of the most common causes of um, Diabetes is one of the most common causes of uh, depression. Is it? Yes. Diabetes it is, is a common cause of 30 to 40 wow. percent yes. of people with diabetes have depression. Have depression. That is very. 30 to 40 percent. 30 to 40 percent of people actually, who have who have diabetes have, have some form of depression. Oh, some form wow. of depression. Because oh, wow. they look at mm -hmm. it like a, like a lifelong condition. Right. So most of the time, if there's no good support system, especially from the family level. And that's why we say it's diabetes and the family. You're not only dealing with the individual, but the individual and the family, because mm. of all the social support system that we give, mm. in terms of emotional support, medication, and finances. Diabetes is quite expensive, and also information. The right information, when to do, what to do, and what time, what and who to whom to consult <laughs> right. is quite important. Because you know, like this uh, non-communicable diseases, Everybody's a doctor nowadays. <laughs> the herbal people have come in. That's true, everyone is a Everybody, doctor. we call them the people who treat us with the, what do we call them? Uh, detox, the form, some form of detoxication. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might get the wrong information. So it's just to inform them that the hospitals and the doctors who are qualified in that area mm -hmm. who can work with you in terms of your diabetes management. Right. So it starts from the word go. Mm -hmm. There's drug adherent. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have to take insulin forever. Mm -hmm. So that is the way we work with them. I see. From the word go. And you both, um, uh, specifically in Empisha Hospital, yes. you are in the diabetes care center, yes. to be specific, diabetes yes. care center. And so what interests me is um, Kenya as a whole. You know, I, I look and I see, right, what you said, our food is changing. We eat more, mm. like, a, we eat more like Westerners than most African countries do actually. Mm. A lot of African countries don't have as much fast food as we do. I think it's probably us and South Africa that have too much fast food in Egypt or something. But um, there are African countries who have stuck and they have very little fast food and they continue to eat um, their homemade meals and everything. What can we do as a country? I know we can't close down and shut down everything. We can't tell our kids, oh, you can never eat crisps ever again. What can we do as um, an older generation to protect our younger people when it comes to diabetes? Is it, is it through more advocacy? Is it through more awareness? Or what could we I do? I think, you see, um, we've tried to take it from up down. Okay. okay? That means like um, a lot of programs, a lot of education is geared towards parents, you know, towards uh, uh, adults. Mm. The way to deal with it, according to me, is to go down up. Starting education on health right from school mm. you know from the time the child gets into school mm -hmm. 
you start that's where i think our advocacy programs should focus more on yes so that you are starting healthy eating behaviors right from that root you know you see if you start shutting down places i mean that's really not the right way to probably approach it but it is if you're looking at what is available and what is choice by choice what you go and uh, pick you see so if you if you are to tackle such a problem then it has to come from both ways mm. i think from the government aspect there's a lot that is happening at the moment there's the whole ncd alliance we have come up with several guidelines on nutrition physical activity even healthy food availability in schools there's quite a lot that is going on there are guidelines coming up on diabetes itself on high blood pressure you know for made very easy for people the public and also for the healthcare providers so that at their level is happening in that aspect i, I think the aspect of looking at the whole food industry mm. and optimizing what is made available to the people out there also needs to look into mm -hmm. so for example if there is a fast food restaurant why can't they also have options for healthier eating you see so it could still be fast food but it could be a healthier fast food option you get it i see preparing a salad is i think equally not going to take equal not so much time as preparing chips for example right so if you are preparing the or fast sandwich food, from know, subway or a sandwich a healthier yeah. sandwich you know yeah. always like the, the whole point is the fast foods if they just added on to this aspect of you know having um, basically policies that you should have a healthier option as well mm -hmm. something like that just something simple then from schools canteens you know advocating what the canteens are providing health education in schools and basically providing more time for play right providing more time for physical activity Activities. you get it I can nowadays agree. even schools you see what happens in schools a child goes from morning in fact their schools which open at 7 i was surprised for a 4 5 year old so you start the child goes to school at 7 7:30 and all the way till 3 they are there you know and then no they come home with homework yeah. you know and hardly any physical activity you go to the school there's hardly even you know there are playgrounds but they're empty yeah many a time so right. i think if it starts from that grassroots level it really will make a difference I am telling you if you walk wow, if you if you are even on our roads uh, do you have a bicycle lane no there's no bicycle lane where what I was I mean it if does, I was a cyclist I would people. be I would fear the road like anything because there's yeah. no place where you can cycle you know? yeah. cycling to work a simple you know option which happens in many european yeah countries. in many you always have a cycling a lane <laughs> yeah yes. people are in suits and they are cycling to work and that's healthy you see uh, you are physically exerting uh, you see availability of parks for example okay availability of more of uh, areas where people can go out and you know areas. just recreational and um uh, workouts you know Less right clubs. now go to a gym how many people can afford going even to a gym it's expensive or right? even to a club you know a, a, a sports club mm. it's really very limited people who have access to those if you make more of these available and advocate for the same I think we'll hit it at a larger level i see thank mm. you so much also, for that then I, also at home eh? okay okay you understand even in homes nowadays eh? mm -hmm. then people their children are now having indoor games instead of out they are either on their phones or playstation you know and like our days when we would go out and play a game called kati <laughs> and what <laughs> not Lada, then yeah of course then you'd come back to the house you you really burn a lot of calories oh, yeah. and then it would be helpful but nowadays even at home we can even start at home we're just so here. that yeah you just mm. on phone you're not on playstation which is not a uh, helping for the kids so we can uh, advert, um make parents uh, help their children understand that physical activity like bicycle riding i know because of the the way dynamics of life bicycle riding nowadays it looks more classy but it's still physical if you can buy a bike or if those ones who cannot afford can just go out and play the normal usual games then it will help <laughs> out See. Yes. I do appreciate your insight. Mm. Unfortunately, I am being told that we do need to wind up and we do need to pay for it for the next show which is going to be youth and politics with Heather Wadidi. But before we do that, please remember that sorry by the way, our, our internet is not really working today and I've not been able to get you the questions that um our viewers were supposed to do that but next week we are covering diabetes type 2 and we do expect for things to run the same and i hope that we can still have you on set maybe we can focus more about the counseling aspect and also um 
learn a bit more about diabetes part two. Thank you so much for coming on Sector Dr. Sakwala and also okay. Pauline Machio. Thank, Thank you so much. I do appreciate your time. My name is Joy Machache. Coming up next is Hilda Wadidi. And do remember that if you have anything ready for next week that you want to ask Dr. Sakwala, do do so on our Facebook and our Twitter. And you have to do hashtag health on Monday and ask anything you want to ask about diabetes. And Dr. Sakwala will be here. Or our counselor, Pauline Machio, will be here to answer the questions next Monday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.